coding should really only be done when the researcher is fully familiar with the data that he or she has gathered. But coding is actually quite straightforward in that it's about labeling sections or passages of text with a code word or code words. And coding is about identifying within the text interesting or salient features of the data that relate to the research questions or research objectives. Now coding can be done at a fairly basic level, what we call a, a, a manifest level, whereby you are looking at the words that are in front of you and coding based on the words that are have been transcribed, for example. More latent level coding is where researchers are using their own judgments and own views and perhaps reading between the lines of what's been said within the data. Now that is obviously a more complex process than simply coding at a, at a manifest level. The actual practicalities of coding is really, from my experience, is using highlighter pens, coloured pens and post-it notes. It's actually a very tactile experience and it's about getting more and more familiar with the data that's in front of you. The idea is to go through the entire data set and code that material and you can have multiple codes for the same segment of text as you'll see from the next example. This is a practical example of coding and this has come from my own data. Now the actual content of what's in front of you here is irrelevant. Rather, I want to show you what coding looks like in reality. So this is an extract from a transcript um, as part of, of one of my research studies. Now the process of coding, as I've mentioned, is about highlighting interesting or salient features of the data and providing that data with a code. So you can see here where I've highlighted parts of the text that are of interest to my research questions. And on the right hand side in the margin, I provided a code that represents features or meaning within that text. So this is what your coding process should look like. You should have a long list of, of codes down the right hand side of your transcript that relate to particular segments or passages of text within your transcript. The actual codes that you use, I'd suggest keep them brief and succinct. So for example, I have here a code that's called low sickness rate. And you can see how that relates to the passage of text that's been highlighted. So try and keep your codes relatively short and succinct because that will help as you move through the qualitative data analysis process. You should now see in front of you a long list of codes that relate to the data that you've collected. It is about refocusing and refining your analysis by sorting your codes into some sort of order or into some sort of grouping. So it's about thinking how your codes can be merged together and combined to form an overarching thematic category. So here's an example again from my own research about how I derived the theme bang up. Now this related to some research that I did in prison and bang up is a term that relates to prisoners being locked up in a prison cell. Now the theme bang up was derived from the initial coding process which you can see here on the left hand side. So within the codes that I derived there were a number that related to the process of prisoners being locked up in their prison cell and you can see there you know being locked up, time slowing down in the prison cell, worrying whilst in the prison cell, boredom in the prison cell, all of those clearly relate to being locked up and banged up. So I felt that as a result of those codes, I could group them together into this overall thematic category, which was called 
bang up which was really describing the loss of control that prisoners had whilst in their prison cell. So just to clarify, the initial coding process derived a number of codes related to the experience of being locked in a prison cell. I then went through a process of grouping together those codes which were similar in nature and derived a theme bang up which encapsulated all of those codes. So if you can imagine the process of grouping together codes to create broader thematic categories, you can then start to consider how those themes themselves may interrelate and how themes may have different levels or hierarchies. So another way to think about themes and how they interlink and perhaps create hierarchies and orders of thematic categories is to look at what Jennifer Attrad Sterling calls thematic networks. Now Attrad Sterling refers to basic themes, organizing themes and global themes and again I've used my data to try to illustrate what that looks like. So you remember the theme that was developed early in this presentation called Bang Up and how that related to prisoners being behind their prison cell and feeling a kind of lack of control. Within my data there were other themes um, that related to this sense of prisoners losing control. So I won't go into detail about each of these themes but as an example uh, prisoners felt as though they were being treated as children and that had a, a very disempowering effect so I created a theme called feeling infantilized now these themes or that tried Sterling calls them basic themes have something in common which I felt was the process of losing control now losing control is what Jennifer tried Sterling calls an organizing theme so the organizing theme links together the basic themes. You can take this a step further and think about global themes and how they also interlink with organizing themes. So from my data you can see I had several organizing themes that interlinked to create one global theme which in this instance was called control. So a thematic network may look something like this. Now again, um, this was from my own research and constituted a lot of qualitative data. But you can see how basic themes, organizing themes and the central global theme interlink and relate. And that's the purpose of the thematic network to show those interrelationships between thematic areas. I think it's useful to share what I see as some potential pitfalls that new researchers experimenting with qualitative research often face. The first one which I see quite a lot, especially in student work, is endless quotations that are used to support a thematic idea. Now, simply listing quotes under a thematic heading is not thematic analysis. Thematic analysis, of course, uses quotations to support the interpretation of the researcher, but in my view, they should be used fairly sparingly, and instead, there should be more of an analytical commentary on the theme that the researcher has developed. The second point I would make is that the data collection questions that you may use from interviews and focus groups are not themes, they are just questions. And so the process of moving beyond simply the raw data that's gathered through the interview and the focus group to create thematic categories does take a lot of work. And often I see students trying to, to cut the corners of qualitative data analysis by simply using their uh, data collection questions as a heading for which they then discuss the answers to those questions. That's a very poor presentation of qualitative data analysis. 
The final point is that your analysis must be grounded in the original data set. So you must be absolutely confident that the themes and ideas that you develop can be linked back to the original raw data. And that's really important because it shows a level of, of trustworthiness in the way that the data has been analysed.